Already in the 1980s, the Brundtland Commission uh, pinpointed sustainable development as one of the most important issues to be addressed in the, the near future. And yet, 30 years later, failing business models and bad management practices are topping the news. Responsible leadership is a norm today. What are the practices? What is it that they are actually doing? Uh, what is it like to lead and manage in a different way than what the organization of the company has been used to? The speed, the intensity, the complexity is increasing. Uh, and this actually puts new challenges to leaders uh, as to perform their business. The idea that strong leaders change the world is not valid anymore simply because that model cannot address the complexity of society and the problems that we are fighting with. We're studying responsible leadership in a stakeholder society. There are three um, fundamental research questions uh, in this project and the first one is about uh, the framing, the translation of what is responsible leadership in this context, in this organization and in these different markets. We are a bioeconomy company. We are entrusted with converting biomass to smart and environmentally friendly products. Uh, and in doing so, we make an embedded promise that the way that we harvest the forest, the way that we take out the trees from the forest is done in a responsible way. The way that we produce and transport our goods are done with minimum impact and that the products that we produce are smart, climate friendly and responsible. If we really want to improve and take the organization to the next level, um, you have to sort of move away from the systems and to work more with behavior, the culture. That demands a whole different set of leadership skills. It's a bit of trial and error and uh, going two steps forward and maybe one step back from time to time. Second one is about what is it that trigger responsible behaviour in an organisation, in a specific organisation. When sustainable practices were first discussed, they usually came from a production environmental point of view, low emissions, no effluents, etc. Or for a way of managing forests in the right way, and those are things are still relevant, but the ethical dimension of good business practices is clearly something that has developed the last 10 years. And the social side, in a real sense, has basically developed the last five years. And then I'm talking about community impact, human rights, working practices and so on. And the third one would be, uh, what are the implications of external and internal pressure on the organization to build or perform responsible leadership. I'm not saying you don't need instructions, of course you do, and of course you need control and especially in everything having to do with financial issues and you have to be accountable, but I think we also need to be accountable in a different way in the future. How are we valued and how are we accountable as leaders? I think the more you discuss ethical questions, the more difficult they get. If the moment that you dare to go from a black and white approach to see the shades of greats, you get into it. You become a more mature organization. I think it's a learning journey somehow. I think we have very good partners in this. Leaders can make a difference by setting new standards for responsible behavior and by encouraging the development of new leadership practices and also by acting role models. But the role modeling that we are expecting is quite different from the, the kind of strong leadership approach. Organizations are parts of integrated ecosystems and so are the leaders. So we kind of expect models that are much more grounded in collective work and collaborative work within and across organizations. And that is what this research is all about.